I work as a teacher at the University of Alicante, where I recently obtained my PhD on digital libraries and link open data. And I'm also a software developer at the Biblioteca Virtual Miguel de Cervantes. And today I'm gonna to talk about data quality. Well, those are my colleagues at the university. And well, as you may know, many organizations are publishing their data are link open data. For example, the National Library of France, the National Library of Spain, US, which is Cervantes Virtual, the British National uh, Bibliography, the Library of Congress, or Europeana. All of them provide uh, a Sparkle endpoint, which is useful in order to retrieve the data. And if I'm not wrong, uh, the Library of Congress only provides the data as a dump that you can use. Uh, when we publish our, our repository as link open data, my idea was to be reused by other institutions. But what about if I'm a, an institution uh, who wants to enrich their data with any data from other digital library? Which data set should I, should I use? Which data set is better in terms of quality? Well, the benefits of the evaluation of uh, the quality in libraries are many. For example, methodologies can be improved in order to include new criteria in order to assess the quality. And also organizations can benefit from best practices and guidelines in order to publish their data as link open data. What do we need in order to assess the quality? Well, obviously, a set of candidates and a set of features. For example, do they have a Sparkle endpoint? Do they have a web interface? How many publications do they have? How many vocabularies do they use? How many Wikidata properties do they have? And where can I get those candidates? I use Lot Cloud, but when I was doing these slides, I thought about using Wikidata in order to retrieve those candidates. For example, getting entities of, the, of type digital library which has an Sparkle endpoint. You, can, you, you have here the link. And I come up with those uh, digital libraries. The first one uses bibliographic ontology as main vocabulary, and the others are based more or less on Ferber, which is a vocabulary published by IFLA. And this is just an example of how we could compare digital libraries using bubble charts on Wikidata. And this is just an example uh, comparing how many Wikidata properties are per digital library. And well, how can we measure quality? There are different methodologies. For example, Farber One, which provides a set of criteria grouped by dimensions. And those in green are the ones that I found that I could assess by means of Wikidata. And we also find that we could define new criteria, new criteria, for example, a new one to evaluate the number of duplicates in Wikidata. We use those properties, and this is an example of, a, of a Sparkle, in order to count the number of duplicates per uh, property. And about the results, well, at the moment of doing this study, not the slides, there was no property for the British National Bibliography. They don't provide provenance information which could be useful for metadata enrichment. And they don't allow to edit the information. So we've been talking about Wikibase the whole weekend and maybe we should try to adopt Wikibase as an uh, interface. And they are focused on their own content and this is just a Sparkle query based on Wikidata in order to assess the population and the BNF provides labels in multiple languages, and they all use self-describing URIs, which is that in the URI they have the type of entity, which uh, allows the human reader to, to understand what they are using. And more results, they provide different output, output formats, they provide external, they use external vocabularies, only the British National Bibliography provides machine-readable license information, and up to one-third 
of the in instances are connected to external repositories, which is really nice. And well, uh, this uh, study, this work has been done in our labs team. A lab in Erlam is uh, a group of people uh, who wants to uh, who wants to explore new ways of reusing digital collections. And there's a community led by the British Library, and in particular Mahindra Mahay. And we had the first uh, event on London, and another one in Copenhagen, and we're going to have a new one in May at the Library of Congress in Washington. And we are now 250 people, and I'm so glad that I found somebody here at the Wikidatacon who has done join us, Silvia from El Colegio de México, and I'd like you to invite you uh, to our community since uh, uh, you may be part of a, GLAM of a GLAM institution. So we can talk later if you want to know more about this. And this it's all about people. This is me, people from the British Library, Library of Congress, universities and uh, national libraries in Europe. And there's a link here in case you want to know more. And well, last month we decided to meet in Doha in order to write a book about how to create a lab in a glam. And they chose 15 people and I was so lucky to be there. And the book follows the book sprint methodology, which means that nothing is prepared beforehand. All is done there in a week. And believe me, it was really hard working to have the whole book done in this week. And I'd like you to introduce you your book, which will be published. It, it was supposed to be published this week, but it will be next week. <laughs> and it will be published open, so you, you can have it. And I can show you a little bit later if you want. And those are the authors. I'm here. I'm so happy to. And those are the institutions, Library of, uh, Library of Congress, British Library. And this is the title. And now I'd like you to show you a map that I'm doing. Uh, we are launching a website for a community, and I'm in charge of creating a map with only our institutions there. This is not finished, but this is the sparkle, and below we see the map. And we see here the new people that I found here at the Wikidatacon. I'm so happy for this. And we have here uh, my digital library in my university and many other institutions. We also from Australia, if I can do it. <laughs> well, here we have some links. There you go. OK, this is not finished. And we are still working on this. and. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. National Library of the Netherlands and I would like to share my work which I'm doing about creating linked open data for Dutch public libraries using Wikidata. Um, and my story starts roughly a year ago when I was at the Glam Wiki conference in Tel Aviv in Israel and there are two men with very similar shirts and equally similar hairdos met. <laughs> Um, and on, on the left, that's me. And a year ago, I didn't have any practical knowledge and skills about Wikidata. I looked at Wikidata, and I looked at the items, and I played with it, but I wasn't able to make a Sparkle query, or to do data modeling, or to write a shape expression. Uh, that's a year ago. And on the left-hand side, that's Simon Kopp, user SIG19. And I was talking to him because just before, he had given a presentation about 
improving the coverage of public libraries in Wikidata. And I was very inspired by his talk. And basically, he was talking about adding basic data about public libraries. So the name of the library, if available, a photo of the building, the address the data of the library, uh, the geo coordinates, lat latitude, longitude, and some other things, including all, with all source <laughs> references. And what I was very impressed about a year ago was this map. This is a map about public libraries in the UK with all the colors. And you can see that all the libraries are layered by library organizations. And I was really, when he showed this, I was, wow, that's cool. So then I, one minute later, I thought, well, let's do it for the country <laughs> for that one. Um, and something about public libraries in the Netherlands are about 1,300 library branches in our country, uh, grouped into 160 library organizations. And you might wonder, why do I want to do this project? Well, first of all, because for the common good, for society, because I think using Wikidata and from there uh, creating Wikipedia articles and opening up via the linked open data cloud, it's improving visibility and reusability of public libraries in the Netherlands. And my second goal was actually a more personal one, because a year ago I had this uh, yearly evaluation with my manager, and we decided it was a good idea that I got more practical skills on linked open data, data modeling, and also on Wikidata. And of course, I wanted to be able to make uh, these kinds of maps myself. <laughs> um, then you might wonder, why do I want to do this? Isn't there already enough basic library data out there in the Netherlands to have a good coverage? Um, so le let me show you some of the websites that are available to discover address and location information about Dutch public libraries. And the first one is this one, gidsvoornederland.nl, and that's the official public library inventory maintained by my library, the National Library. And you can, see, you can look up addresses and geo-coordinates uh, on that website. Then there is this site, Bibliothekenzicht. This is also an official website maintained by my national library. And this is about public library statistics. Then there is another one, debibliotheken.nl. As you can see, there's also address information about library organizations, not about individual branches. And there's even this one, which also has address information. And of course, there's something like uh, Google Maps, which also has all the names and the locations and the addresses. And this one, the International One Library Technology, which has a worldwide inventory of libraries, including the Netherlands. And I even discovered there is a data set you can buy for 50 euros or so to download it. And there is also, seems to be, I didn't download it, but there seems to be address information available. And you might wonder, is this kind of data good enough for the purposes I, I had? Um, so I, this is my birthday list for my ideal public library data list. And what's, what's on my list? First of all, the data I want to have must be up-to-date dish. It must be fairly up-to-date, so it doesn't be, have to be real-time, but let's say a couple of months or half a year uh, delayed with official publication, that's okay for my purposes. And I want to have it both the library branches and the library organizations. Then I want my data to be structured because it has to be machine-readable. It has to be in open file format, such as uh, CSV or JSON, RDF. It has to be linked to other resources, preferably. And the users, the, the license on the data needs to be manifest public domain or CC0. Then I would like my data to have an API, which must be uh, public, free, and preferably also anonymous, so that you don't have to use an API key or have to register an account. And I also want to have a Sparkle interface. So now these are all the sites I just showed you, and now I'm going to make a big grid. <laughs> and then this is about the evaluation I did. I'm not going into it, but there is no single column which has all green check marks. That's the important thing to take away. And so in summary, there was no linked 
public free linked open data for Dutch public libraries available before I started my project. So this was the, my, the ideal motivation to actually work on it. So that's what I've been doing for a year now, and I've been adding libraries bit by bit, organization by organization, to Wikidata. I created a, uh, also a project website on it. It's still rather messy, but it has all the information, and I uh, try to keep it as up-to-date as possible. And also all the Sparkle queries you can see are linked from here. And I'm just adding really basic information. You see the instances, uh, images if available, addresses, locations, etc., municipalities. And where possible, I also try to link the libraries to external identifiers. And then you can really easily, we all know, generating some uh, Listeria list for, with public libraries grouped by organizations, for instance, or using Sparkle queries, you can also do aggregation on data, let's say that gives me all the municipalities in the Netherlands and the number of library branches in the, all the municipalities. With one click, you can make these kinds of uh, photo galleries. And what I set out to do first, you can really create these kinds of maps. And you might, you might wonder, are there any libraries here or there? There are, but they're not yet in, in Wikidata. I was still working on that. <laughs> and actually, last week, I spoke with a volunteer who is he's helping now with entering the, the libraries. Uh, and you can, yeah, you can really make cool... Uh, on wi in, in Wikidata and also using the cartographer extension, you can use uh, these kinds of maps. And I even took it one step further. I also have some Python skills and some leaflet things skills. So I created, and I'm, I'm quite proud of it actually. I created this library heat map, which is fully interactive. You can zoom into it and you can see all the libraries. Uh, and you can also run it off Wiki. So you can just embed it in your own website, and it it fully runs. Uh, interactively. So now going back to my big scary table, there is one column on the on the right is which is blank, and no surprise there will be Wikidata, and let's see how it scores there. Yeah. yeah. So this is. Uh, so I actually think of printing this on a T-shirt. Uh, yeah. So just to summarize this in words, thanks to my project now there is public free linked open data available for Dutch public libraries. Uh, and who can benefit from my effort? Well, all kinds of parties. You see Wikipedia, because you can generate lists and overviews and articles, for instance, using this Mbabel tool I, from Wikidata, for our national library, for later IFLA also have an inventory of worldwide libraries. They can also reuse their data. And especially for Sandra, it's also important for the Ministry of uh, Dutch Ministry of Culture, because Sandra is going to have a talk about Wikidata with the Ministry this Monday, next Monday. Um, and also on the right-hand side, for instance, um, Amazon with Alexa, the, the, the assistant, they're also using Wikidata, so you can imagine that they will also use, if you're looking for public library information, they can also use Wikidata for that. Um, because one year ago, Simon Cobb inspired me to do this project. I would like to call upon you, if you have time available, and you ha if you have data from your own country about public libraries, um, make the coverage better, add more red, red dots. And of course, I'm willing to help you with that, and Simon is also willing to help with that. And so I hope next year somebody else will be at this conference or another conference, and there will be more red dots on the map. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olaf. Next, we have Ursula Oberst and Helen Smits presenting how can a small research library benefit from Wikidata, enhancing library products using Wikidata. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Helene Smits. Uh, my colleague Ursula Oberst 
Ja, ja. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I work uh, at the library of uh, the African Studies Center in Leiden in the Netherlands. And the African Studies Center is a uh, center devoted, is an academic institution devoted entirely to the study of, uh, of Africa, focusing on humanities and social studies. We used to be an independent research organization, but in 2016 we became part of Leiden University, and our catalog was integrated into the larger uh, university catalog. Uh, though it remained possible to do a search in the part of the Leiden of the African Studies catalogue alone. Um, we remained independent in some respects, for example, with respect to our thesaurus, um, and uh, also in, with respect to the products we make for our users, uh, such as acquisition lists and web dossiers. And um, it is in the... Uh, um, uh, the field of the web dossiers that we uh, have been looking for um, uh, possible ways to apply Wikidata, and that's the part where Ursula will, in the second part of this talk, uh, show you a bit uh, what we've been doing there. Um, the web dossiers are, are, are uh, uh, collections of titles from our catalogue that we uh, compile, compile around a theme, usually connected to, uh, to, for example, a conference or uh, to a special event. And actually, the last, or the most recent web dossier we made was uh, uh, connected to the year of uh, indigenous languages, uh, and that was around uh, proverbs in African languages. Our first steps, go to the next slide. Uh, our first steps on the Wikipass as a library uh, were in 2013 when we were one of uh, 12 GLAM institutions in the Netherlands, uh, part of the uh, project of uh, Wikipedians in residence. And uh, we had uh, for two months a Wikipedian in the house. And he uh, gave us trainings uh, for uh, adding articles to Wikipedia. And also we made a start with uploading uh, photo collections to Commons, uh, which always remained a little bit uh, dependent on funding as well, uh, whether we would be able to digitize them and to mostly have a student assistant uh, to do this. Um, but it was actually a, a great uh, adding to what we could offer as an, uh, as an academic library. Um, in May 2018, so I said, my, my colleague also, Ursula, she started to really explore, uh, dive into Wikidata and see what we as a small and not very much experienced library in, in these uh, fields uh, could do with that. Um, so I mentioned we have our own thesaurus, um, and uh, this is where we started. It is a thesaurus of uh, uh, 13,000 terms, all, all in the field of African studies. It contains a lot of uh, um, African languages, um, uh, uh, names of ethnic groups in, in, in Africa, um, and other uh, proper names which are uh, perhaps uh, especially interesting uh, for uh, for Wikidata. Um, so we um, it is it is a real uh, uh, authority uh, uh, controlled uh, vocabulary with five thousand uh, preferred terms. So we submitted the request to Wikidata, and that was actually fa uh, very quickly. Uh, uh, met with a positive response, which was very encouraging for us. And um, so um, our thesaurus was loaded into a mix and match, and, uh, and by now 75% of, uh, of the terms have been um, manually matched with uh, Wikidata. Um, so it means, uh, well, that, uh, yeah, we are now, uh, we are in, um, edit as an um, as an identifier. For example, if you click on uh, Swahili language, uh, what happens then in in Wikidata on the number uh, that um, 
connects our term, it's the Wikidata term, you enter into our thesaurus, uh, and from there you can do a, a search directly in the, in the catalog by uh, clicking the button again. It means also that um, we, Wikidata is not really integrated into our catalog, but that's also, yeah, more difficult. Okay, we have to uh, give the floor to uh, Ursula for the next part. Yeah. Thank you very much, Elaine. So uh, I will uh, talk about um, our experiences with incorporating Wikidata elements to our web dossier. A web dossier... Uh, Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, a web dossier, our classical web dossier consists of uh, three parts, an introduction to the subject, uh, mostly written by one of our researchers, a selection of titles, both uh, books and articles from our collection, and the third part, an annotated uh, um, link, uh, list with links to electronic resources. And uh, this year, um, we added a fourth part to our web dossiers, which is the uh, Wikidata element. <coughs> and uh, it all started uh, last year, and my story is similar to the story of Olaf, actually. Last year, when I uh, had no clue about Wikidata, and I, read, and I discovered this wonderful article by Alex Dinson on how to write a query in Wikidata. And he chose a subject, uh, a very appealing subject to me, namely discovering women writers from North Africa. I can really recommend this, uh, uh, inst uh, um, this article because it's very instructive. And I uh, thought I will be, I, I'm going to work on this uh, query and try to change it uh, to uh, Southern African women writers and try to add a link to their work in our catalog. And on the right hand side, you see the, the Sparkle query, uh, yeah, two, which searches for Southern African women writers. If you click on the uh, button, on the blue button on the left hand uh, side, um, the search result will appear beneath. The search result can have different formats. My, in my case, uh, the search result is a map. And a nice thing about uh, Wikidata is that you, can, that you can embed this search result into your own web page. And that's what we are now doing with our web dossiers. So this was the, the very first one on Southern African women writers with the uh, classical three elements plus this uh, map on the left hand uh, side which uh, yeah, gives extra information, a link to the Southern African women writer, a link to her works in our catalog and a link uh, to the Wikidata uh, record of her birthplace and um, her name. Uh, a personal record plus a photo if it's available on uh, Wikidata. And um, yeah, to uh, retrieve a nice uh, map with a lot of red dots on the African continent, you need nice data in Wikidata, complete, sufficient data. So with our second uh, web dossier, on public art in Africa, we also started to um, enhance the data in Wikidata, in this case for our public art. We added a geolocation, so, uh, uh, yeah, a geolocation to uh, Wikidata, and we also uh, searched for um, works of public art in Commons, and if they don't have a record on uh, Wikidata yet, we, yeah, we added it, the record to, um, to Wikidata. And um, uh, the third thing uh, we do, because um, yeah, when, we, when we prepare a, a web dossier, we download uh, the, uh, uh, the titles from our catalog, and the titles are in Mark 21, so we have to convert them to a format that is presentable on the website, and it takes not much time and effort to convert uh, the same set of titles to Wikidata Quick Statements, and then we uh, uh, also upload the title set to, uh, to Wikidata, and uh, here you can see uh, the titles we uploaded uh, from our uh, latest uh, web dossier on African proverbs in, um, in Scolia, um, a ni really a nice tool that visualizes scholarly publications uh, being present in Wikidata. And 
One second, and we add, as it, when it is possible, we add the Scolia template to our web dossiers topic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Helen and Ursula. Next, we have Adrian Pohl presenting using Wikidata to improve spatial, sub spatial subject indexing and regional bibliography. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm going right into the topic. I only have 10 minutes to present a three-year project. It wasn't, it wasn't full time. <laughs> okay, so um, what's the NWBIB? It's a, it's the Nor it's just an acronym for North Rhine-Westphalian Bibliography. It's a regional bibliography that records literature about people and places in North Rhine-Westphalia. And yeah, there are monographs in it, and uh, um, there are a lot of articles in it, and most of them are quite unique, so that's the interesting thing about this bibliography, because it's often there's quite obscure stuff, people, local people writing about their tradition and something like this. Um, yeah, there's over um, 400,000 entries in there. Um, the bibliography started in 1983, and they, uh, so we only have titles um, from this publication year onwards. Um, if you want to take a look at it, it's at nwbib.de. There's the web application. It's based on our uh, service lobbit.org, uh, the API, um, because it's uh, cataloged as part of the HBZ Union catalog, which comprises 20 million, around 20 million records. It's uh, an ex libris ILS system. We get the data out of there, make um, RDF out of it and provide it as a, via JSON LD um, HTTP API. So um, the initial status uh, in 2017 was we had eight, uh, nearly 9,000 distinct strings about places, referring to places in North Rhine Westphalia. Mostly those were administrative areas. Um, like towns, uh, districts, and um, but also monasteries, principalities, or natural regions, and yeah, we have we already used uh, Wikidata in 2017 and matched those strings with a, a Wikidata API to Wikidata entries quite naively to get the geo coordinates from there and do some geo-based uh, um, discovery stuff with it. But yeah, this had some drawbacks, um, so the matching was really poor. Um, there were lots of false positives, and um, there was, and we still had no hierarchy in those places, and and we still had those a lot of non-unique names. So this is an example here. Does this work? Yeah. Um, as you can see, for one place, Brauweiler, there are four different strings in there. So. We all know the, uh, this, uh, how this happens. Um, if there's no authority file, um, you, you end up with this data. So, but we want to improve on that. Um, uh, and as you can also see, that's why, why the matching didn't work. So you have this name of the place, and there's often the name of the um, superior administrative area, and in, even on uh, the second level, superior administrative uh, area, uh, often in the name to, to make it... Uh, uh, to, to identify the, the place um, successfully. So, yeah, the goal was to um, build a full-fledged spatial classification based on this data with a hierarchical view of places um, and, yeah, with one entry or ID for each place. And we got this mock-up by NWBIP editors in 2016. It uh, made an Excel um, to, yeah, the, to get a feeling what, what they w would like to have um, yeah, there you have the Regierungsbezirke, that's the most superior administrative area. Then you have um, some towns or districts, rural districts, and then it's going down to the um, parts of, of towns even to, the, to this level. And we chose Wikidata uh, for this task. We also looked at the uh, GND, the Integrated Authority File, um, and GeoNames. 
but uh, Wikidata yeah, had the best coverage and yeah, the best infrastructure. Um, the coverage for sp uh, the places and the geo coordinates we need and the hierarchical information, for example. There were a lot of places also in the GND, but there was no hierarchical information in there. And also Wikidata provides the infrastructure for editing and versioning, and there's also a community that helps <laughs> maintaining the data, which is quite good. Um, okay, yeah, but there was a requirement by the NWBIP editors. Um, they did not want to directly, directly rely on Wikidata, which is understandable. We don't have those servers under our control, and we don't know, won't know what's going on there. There might be some unwelcome edits that destroy the classification or parts of it or vandalism. So we decided to, um, to put a, an intermediate SCOS file in between on which the application will be built, which should be generated from Wikidata. Um, SCOS is a simple knowledge organization system. It's, it's the standard way uh, to um, model a, a classification in, in the linked data world. So how we did it, five steps. Um, I will uh, come to each of the steps um, in more detail. We matched the strings to Wikidata uh, with a better approach than before, created a classification based on Wikidata, added then back the links from Wikidata to NWBIP with a custom property, and now we are in the process of establishing a good um, process for updating the classification in, in Wikidata, seeing, uh, having a diff of the changes, and then publishing it to the SCOS file. And um, yeah, I will uh, come to the details. So the matching approach, um, as the API wasn't very sufficient, and because we have those different levels in the, in the, in the strings, um, we, we, we build a custom elastic search index for our um, task. I think by now you could probably uh, as well use OpenRefine for doing this, but, but at that point in time uh, it wasn't available for Wikidata. Um, yeah, and we built this index based on Sparkle query um, for entry entities in WNRW uh, um, with a specific type and the query uh, evolved over time a, a lot, and yeah, if you're interested, you can see the history on GitHub. Um, so that's what, what we put in the matching index. This, in the spatial objects is what we need in, um, in our data. It's the label, um, the ID, or the link to Wikidata, the geo coordinates, and yeah, the type from Wikidata takes as well. But also for the matching, very important, the aliases and the um, broader Thing and this is also an example where the name of the broader entity and the and the district itself are very similar. So here, uh, there, it's important to have some type information as well for the matching. So um, and the matching results were very good. We we could automatically match more than nine, 99 percent of records with this approach. Um, this were only 92% of the strings, so obviously those, those strings that only occurred one or two times often didn't appear in Wikidata, and so we had to do a lot of work with those with a long tail. Um, and yeah, for, for around 1,000 strings, the matching was incorrect, and, but the catalogers did a lot of work in, in the Aleph catalog, but also in Wikidata. They made more than 6,000 manual edits to Wikidata to reach 100% coverage um, by adding aliases, type information, creating new entries. Okay, so I have to speed up. <laughs> um, we created a classification based on this, on the hierarchical statements, P131 is the main uh, property there. We added the information to our data, so we now have this in our data, spatial, a spatial object where on the, in the, with full focus, there's the uh, link to Wikidata, and the types are there, and and here's the ID from the um, SCOS classification we built based on Wikidata. Um, and you can see there's their Q identifiers in there. Uh, yeah. Now you can basically query our API with such a query using Wikidata um, URIs and get literature, for, in this example, about Cologne back. So then we created a Wikidata property for NWBIP and added those links from Wikidata to the classification, batch load them with quick statements, 
And there's also a nice, uh, bro we also uh, moved to using a qualifier on this property to add the broad broader information um, there. So I, I think people won't mess around uh, that lot with this uh, as with the P131 statement. So this is what it looks like. This will go to the classification where you can then start a query. Um, yeah. Now we have to um, build this update and review process and we will add those data like this with a with zero um, subfield to, to, to Aleph and yeah, and the catalogs will start using those uh, wiki database IDs, URIs for cataloging, uh, for spatial indexing. So now, by now, there are 400, uh, more than 400,000 MW BIP entries with links to Wikidata, and more than 4,400 uh, uh, 4, Wikidata entries with links to NW BIP. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. So, uh, as you've seen me before, I'm Hilary Thorson. I am a comedian in residence with the Link Data for Production Project. I'm based at Stanford, and I'm here today with my colleague, Lena Dennis, who's cartographic assistant at Harvard Library. And um, Christine Ford Sudner Eslau is here in spirit. She is currently back in Boston, but supporting us from afar. So, we'll be talking about Wikidata and libraries as partners in data production, organization, and project inspiration and our work as part of the Linked Data for Production project. Uh, so Linked Data Produ for Production is in its second phase called Pathway for Implementation, and it's an Andrew W. Mellon Foundation grant involving the partnership of several universities with the goal of constructing a pathway for shifting the catalog community to begin um, describing library resources with linked data. And it builds upon a previous grant, but this iteration is focused on the practical aspects of the transition. One of these pathways of investigation has been integrating library metadata with Wikidata. We have a lot of questions, but some of the ones we're most interested in are how we can integrate library metadata with Wikidata and make contribution a part of our cataloging workflows, how Wikidata can help us improve our library discovery environment, how it can help us reveal more relationships and connections within our data and with external data sets, and if we have connections in, in our own data that can be added to Wikidata, how libraries can help fill in gaps in Wikidata, and how libraries can work with local communities to describe library and archival resources. Finding answers to these questions has focused on the mutual benefits for the library and Wikidata communities. We've learned through starting to work on our different Wikidata projects that many of the issues libraries grapple with, like data modeling, identity management, data maintenance, documentation, and instruction on linked data are ones the Wikidata community works on too. I'm going to turn things over to Lena to talk about what she's been working on now. Hi, so as Hillary briefly mentioned, I work as a map librarian at Harvard, where I process maps, atlases, and archives for our online catalog. And while processing two-dimensional cartographic works is relatively straightforward, cataloging archival collections so that their cartographic resources can be made discoverable has always been more difficult. So my use case for Wikidata is visually modeling relationships between archival collections and the individual items within them, as well as between archival drafts and published works. So I used Wikidata to highlight the work of our cartographer named Erwin Rice, who worked at Harvard in the early 20th century. He was known for his vividly detailed and artistic landforms, like this one on the screen, but also for inventing the armadillo projection, writing the first cartography textbook in English, and ver other various important con contributions to the field of geography. And at the Harvard Map Collection, we have a 66-item collection of Rice's, Rice's field notebooks, which begin when he was a student and end just before his death. Hmm? There we go. 
Um, so this is the collection level record that I made for them, which merely gives an overview. But his notebooks are full of information that he used in later atlases, maps, and textbooks. But researchers don't know how to find that trajectory information, and the system is not designed to show them. So I felt that with Wikidata and other Wikimedia platforms, I'd be able to take advantage of information that already exists about him on the open web, along with library records and a notebook inventory that I had made in an Excel spreadsheet to show relationships and influences between his works. So here you can see how I edited and reconciled library data in OpenRefine, and then I used quick statements to batch import my results. So now I was ready to create knowledge graphs with Sparkle queries to show patterns of influence. The examples here show how I leveraged Wikimedia Commons images that I connected to him and a hierarchy of some of his works that were contributing factors to other works. So modeling Rice's works in Wikidata allowed me to encompass in a single image, or in this case in two images, the connections that require many pages of bibliographic data to reveal. So this video is going to load. Yes. All right. This video is a minute and a half long screencast I made that I'm going to narrate as you watch. It shows the process of inputting and then running a Sparkle query showing hierarchical relationships between notebooks, an atlas, and a map that Rice created about Cuba. He worked there before the revolution, so he had the unique position of having support from both the American and the Cuban governments. So I made this query as an example to show people who work on Rice and who are interested in narrowing down what materials they'd like to request when they come to us for research. To make the approach repl replicable for other archival collections, I hope that Harvard and other institutions will prioritize Wikidata lookups as they move to linked data cataloging production, which my co-presenters can speak to the progress on better than I can, but my work has brought, me, has brought to mind a particular issue that I see as a future opportunity, which is um, that of archival modeling. So, uh, to an archivist, an item is a discrete archival material within a larger collection of archival materials that is not a physical location. So an archivist from the American National Archives and Records Administration, who is also a Wikidata enthusiast, advised me when I was trying to determine how to express this using an example item that I'm going to show as soon as this video is finally over. All right. Great. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. It's doing that. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Sorry. All right, I don't know why it's not going full screen again. I can't get it to do anything, but um, this is the, oh my gosh, stop that. All right. So, uh, okay, so this is the item that I mentioned. So this was what the, ar the archivist from the National Archives and Records Administration showed me as an example. Um, and he recommended this compromise, which is to use the part of property to connect a lower level description to a higher level of description, which allows the relationships between different hierarchical levels to be asserted as statements and qualifiers. So in this example that's on screen, the relationship between an item, a series, a collection, and a record group are thus contained and described within a Wikidata item entity. So I followed this model in my work on Rice. And one of my images is missing. No, it's not. It's right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I followed this model in my work on Rice, but I look forward to further standardization. So another archival project Harvard is working on is the Arthur Friedman collection of more than 2,000 hours of punk rock performances from the 1970s to early 2000s in the Boston and Cambridge, Massachusetts areas. Uh, it includes many bands and venues that no longer exist. So far, work has been done in Open Refine on reconciliation of the bands and venues to see which need an item created in Wikidata. A basic item will be created via a batch process next spring, and then an edit-a-thon will be held in conjunction with the New England Music Librarian Association's meeting in Boston to focus on adding more statements to the batch-created items by drawing on local music community knowledge. We're interested in learning more about models for pairing librarians and wiki enthusiasts with new contributors who have domain knowledge. Items will eventually be linked to digitized video in Harvard's digital collections platform once rights have been cleared with artists, which will likely be a slow process. 
There's also a great amount of interest in moving away from manual cataloging and creation of authority data towards identity management where descriptions can be created in batches. An additional project that focused on creating international standard name identifiers or ISNIs for avant-garde and women filmmakers can be adapted for creating Wikidata items for these filmmakers as well. Spreadsheets with the ISNIs, filmmaker names, and other details can be reconciled in OpenRefine and uploaded with quick statements. Once people and organizations have been described, we'll move toward describing the films in Wikidata, which will likely present some additional modeling challenges. A library presentation wouldn't be complete without a MARC record. Here you can see the record for Karen Aqua's taxonomy film where her ISNI and Wikidata Q number have been added to the 100 field. The ISNIs and Wikidata Q numbers that have been created can then be batch added back into MARC records via MARC edit. You might be asking why I'm showing you this ugly MARC record instead of some beautiful linked data statements, and that's because our libraries will be working in a hybrid environment for some time. Our library catalog still relies on MARC records, so by adding in these URIs, we can try to take advantage of linked data while our systems still use MARC. Adding URIs into MARC records make an, makes an additional aspect of our project possible. Work has been done at Stanford and Cornell to bring data from Wikidata into our library catalog using URIs already in our MARC records. You can see an example of a knowledge panel where all the data is sourced from Wikidata and links back to the item itself along with an invitation to contribute. This is currently in a test environment, not in production in our catalog. Ideally, eventually, these will be generated from linked data descriptions of library resources created using Synopia, our linked data editor developed for cataloging. We found that adding a lookup to Wikidata in Synopia is difficult. The scale and modeling of Wikidata makes it hard to partition the data to be able to look up typed entities, and we've run into the problem of Sparkle not being good for keyword search, but wanting our keyword APIs to return Sparkle-like RDF descriptions. So as you can see, we still have quite a bit to, of work to do. This round of the grant runs until June 2020, so we'll be continuing our exploration. And um, I just wanted to invite anyone who's continued an interest in talking about Wikidata in libraries. I lead a Wikidata affinity group that's open to anyone to join. We meet every two weeks, and our next call is Tuesday, November 5th. So if you're interested in continuing discussions, I would love to talk with you further. Thank you, everyone, and thank you to the other presenters for talking about all of their wonderful projects. And, uh,